Now, let's move to process safety in operations. First, we need to understand what does it mean. Process safety in operations means securing a safe environment for running a smooth operations that guarantees no major accidents occurs. Without proper process safety systems to manage risks during operations, our facilities will be vulnerable to process safety incidents even they were properly designed and constructed. Let's take an example. Jim and John bought a new car with the same model. Jim has been trained on safe driving and was committed to carry out car maintenance as a schedule. In case of any component defect, Jim assures to replace it in a trusted maintenance workshop with the same type. Sometimes Jim gives his car to his wife, Jasmine, who also is a safe driver and committed to car inspections. Jim keeps emergency numbers in his car just in case of any emergencies. On the other side, John unfortunately is a careless driver. He is reluctant about maintenance schedules and in case of any defect, he goes to any untrusted maintenance technician and replaces the defected component with any other type. John used to give his car to his friends who also are unsafe drivers. John is not prepared for any unexpected emergency situation. In five years, Jim's car still works effectively while John suffers. The same situation applies in our plants. Applying process safety in operations helps us to reduce major accidents, reduce downtimes, and to keep economic value of our assets. So, how can we do that? First, we need to have a clear standard operating procedures for our equipment and units that address all expected modes of operations and mention the consequences of deviations and how to deal with them. Second, we need to assure that all non-routine tasks such as hot works, excavations, confined space entry and lifting are properly managed by a robust safe work practices program. Third, we need to assure the integrity of our assets through the application of a comprehensive inspection testing and preventive maintenance plans. Also, we need to identify our safety critical equipment and assign competent persons to manage them through applying safety critical activities. Fourth, we need to develop and implement a strong contractor management system through which we could assure the qualifications and the compliance of our contractor and we could assure that each contractor understands the nature of our facilities hazards and we understand the risk any contractor could expose us to. Fifth, we need to assure that all required trainings are executed based on each position requirements. Also, we need to assure that any change in the process procedure or the organization is thoroughly reviewed and approved before it is done. We need also to assure the preparedness of our equipment or units before introducing them into service. We need to assure all employees are committed and all rules and responsibilities are clear. And finally, we need to assure that we are well prepared for any emergency and we are equipped with the required resources to do that. Lastly, keep it in your mind. The more focused we are in our operations, the less we will suffer. Thank you.